Okay, I think I'm live. Hey, how are you? Um, so I had, I'm going through all my old videos from last year and there's a lot of vocabulary that I'm trying to make sure you know. Some of it you should know, some of it may be new. Everybody's kind of all over the place. I, it's really important that you know this stuff uh, before we start moving along. And we're getting a little bit quicker start this year because we're trying to squeeze in more without uh, going too fast. So it's really important that you take it upon yourself to figure out which vocabulary you know and what you don't know. Now, this is between two old videos that you're gonna see this week. And the problem was when I did this last year, uh, this video here of me in my classroom last year, a lot of complaints. Uh, it was really hard to see the board. I kept turning away and my audio was really bad. Um, so I'm gonna redo that one. So uh, I'm gonna do it right here on the screen. I'm gonna add a few new things, but largely it's just me making this better for you. Um, so, uh, we've already talked some, oh, I got to figure this out, so annotate, we're going to annotate, okay, and we're drawing, oh, I can even do straight lines, beautiful, this will be even better, so we're going to talk about angles, so first of all, uh, this is an angle, I don't love that color, so I'm going to change it, uh, let's make it purple, ooh, beautiful, okay, um, oh, and let me do this, okay, so there is always, uh, an angle always has what's called a point or more specifically a vertex, okay? Vertex is the corner, but it's a point. Uh, and these things that make up the angle, the two sides are actually called rays. Each one's called a ray, like a ray of sunshine. Oh, I made it yellow. Isn't that perfect? Uh, and then the area between is typically called, uh, is measured with degrees. And I hopefully, most of you probably know that something that size has how many degrees? Most of you probably say, oh, that's a 90 degree angle. Most people recognize that. The 90 is kind of arbitrary. Somebody a long time ago decided that if you had a point and you went all the way around it, it's 360. So if we were gonna do just a fourth of that, which is what that is, that's why that's 90. And so you can usually guess how big an angle is. Uh, this one right here looks like it's about, I'm gonna just say about 30 degrees. I don't know. And we use this little dot up here, just like we do for temperature to mean degrees, but it, it means how much did I turn? Uh, and if you did a, a full turn, which would make a, a line, which is one of our other vocabulary words, we're taking care of a lot of vocabularies. This actually has, if we we're always gonna put a point on that and pretend like this is an angle, even though it doesn't look like one, uh, this would be you know, 180 degree turn because we do a 180, we turn all the way around. Whereas if we spin all the way around to slam the basketball in, we do 360 degree slam. Okay, so that was a quick review. And so let me clear all that. Okay, um, so when we draw these, once again, I'm gonna go back to my, I love the straight line. Okay, now I can put arrows on these and typically I would, because that just tells me typically a line goes on forever. Oops, that was not good. It's supposed to be a, a directional kind of thing, okay? If you put arrows on these normally, they go on forever. If we don't put arrows on them, they may look like something else, which is called a segment, which just has dots on the end or points on the end. Once again, dot and point are kind of the same thing. Point is the more formal name in geometry. Uh, I can name that point A and I can name that point B. And then this is a segment. And I can call that segment AB, or I can actually say AB. And the way I let somebody know it's a segment is I just put a segment over it, as opposed to a line, because a line keeps going. So if I was going to do a much longer one, maybe CD, the way I would name that is CD with arrows in both directions, which brings us to our thing over here. Okay. I'm going to call this X. I'm going to call this Y. I'm going to call this Z. Okay. There's four angles here, which is really important to recognize. Oh, there's four angles. Okay. One way I can name this angle right here is Y, X, Z. And the question I have for you is why can't I call that angle X? What would be confusing if I called that angle X? Right. I got four angle X's. Well, that's angle X, that's angle X, that's angle X. Four angle X's. So if I want to specify this one and it's confusing, I need to give three letters. And the important thing is that you recognize the middle letter is always really where the corner or the vertex is. So I can say Z, X, Y. I'm going to say angle 
and that's our symbol for angle. We're learning a lot of symbols here. Uh, y, X, Z is one way to name that, and the other way to name that is Z, X, Y. Really important. I get to the end of the year and I still have people who don't recognize when I use three letters, I'm telling you it's over here. Because there's another angle over here, and if I give these points names, maybe M and N, this angle over here, do you know what that's going to be called? You got two choices. It's M, X, N, X is in the middle, or N, X, M. It totally doesn't matter which way you call them. They're both describing the same place. They both have the same number of degrees. They're the same. You'll notice there's also another angle here, which has a different name than the other ones. And there's another angle here, which has a different name. So these are all different ways to name angles. It's really important that you understand this three letter concept. Now, this is when things are confusing. When things are not confusing, if I just have something that looks like this, pretend these rays are straight. If I just have something that looks like this, what letter haven't I used? Uh, I haven't used a J yet. That is clearly just angle J. If I call that angle J, there's no confusing. I know that's angle J. There's no other place to confuse it. There were four angle X's up here. Down here, there's only one angle J. But if I have two other letters up here, like K and F, well, I could call this angle KJF or angle FKJ, but I don't need to. And this is also called angle K. J, F. There are two ways to name the same angles. I can use either one. They're both correct. They all both have this, they have the same number of degrees. I'm going to guess that's 28 degrees. I'm making that up. Looks, if I could, I could, there's a tool to measure this called a protractor, but it's, you know, it's less than 90 and probably less than 45 degrees. Um, okay, where are we? Okay, we're talking about different ways to name them. So one letter, if it's obvious, three letters if there might be some confusion and then here's the other way you may see this they're all my drawings uh, i like my straight line. i love that getting straight lines here once again pretend there's arrows on the end here i'm just trying to do this quickly the other way i can do this is i can actually name these with numbers now these numbers aren't the degrees this is obviously more than one degree okay i hope it's obvious okay but i can call that angle one and it's perfectly obvious what i'm talking about okay so you will occasionally do that. Some books will actually do this like a little a, little b, little c, little. I hate it when they do that because they're just confusing people. Uh, so what have we done? We have done degrees. We've done angles. Oh, a linear pair. One and two. Notice how there is a straight line. I'm going to change color here. I'm going to actually make it bigger. And I'm going to change color. Notice there's a straight line right here. That's a line, right? And there is a pair of angles, one and two. That is a linear pair, okay? Three and four, also a linear pair. If I drew the line this way, two and three, linear pair. A linear pair is simply that makes up a pair of angles. It's a straight line. It's got another ray off of it. It's a pair. And what do those two have to add up to? That's right. And do we remember what word we use to describe two angles that add up to 180 degrees? Either they're attached like this or adjacent or they could even be separate. Maybe I had one here and I had another one here and it's obvious when I slap those together, it probably makes 180 degrees. What's it called? It starts with an S. That's the way I told you to remember it because it's a straight line and that is supplementary. Whereas if I have two angles, so right angle, right? Remember our right angle mark? Little square, tell you right angle. If I draw a third ray in there, Okay, I'm going to add my arrows. Those two have to add up to 90 because right angle, my adjacent angles have to sum to whatever two angles add up to. That's called complementary. Once again, straight line, supplementary, D, complementary. And once again, they don't have to be attached unless I tell you it's a linear pair. Linear pair has to be attached. It's talking specifically about this kind of construction although it could be, you know, kind of the other way, okay? So up here, got a linear pair, linear pair. There's actually four sets of linear pair. So my question to you is, what's another linear pair other than one or two in this example? All right, now I'm gonna clear everything. No, let me undo, 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 undo. Go 
back, 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 back. Isn't this terribly exciting? Get back. I'm not going to go too far. Okay, back to here. I want to know. So we just did linear pair. One and two, two and three, three and four, four and one. We talked about this before. What's a pair of vertical angles? It's not a linear pair in this construction. The other possibility is they're vertical. Okay. Well, clearly, this is vertical to this. And this is where I talked about I hate this name. Because, yes, those are vertical. But these are also vertical. And it's not because they're ver vertical. Because they're horizontal. They're going across from each other. This is why some books call vertical angles opposite angles. It's a terrible name. That happens sometimes. Opposite angles. Notice I'm starting to use the symbols. We'll see that a lot. One and three are also opposite angles. And my question is, if angle three is 40 degrees, how big is angle one? That's right. It's 40 degrees. All right. I don't want to make this too long. I think we've done most of this. Oh, plane. Everything on this surface is a plane. The only way this could not be in a plane is if I had a point out in space, like out here with me. If I hold, hold over right here, this point floating in space above the screen, that would be in space. That is not in the plane of these things that are on the screen here. Okay, But a plane is a flat surface. Uh, it looks like airplane, but it just means like a sheet of paper. Uh, we talked about segment naming, line naming, ray naming. Oh, wait, we did not talk about ray naming. Let's just do that real quick. Let's say that point, that's point A. That's point B. That's point C. So my first question for you, angle one there. What's the other way I can name angle one other than angle one based on the fact that I've got points B, A, and C here? Right. B, A, C, or angle C, A, B. Those are both correct names for angle one. In this situation, these can all be correct. And this is often a question on a beginning geometry quiz is like, what are three names for that angle? Um, but let's say I wanted to name, I'm going to change colors here. This ray. Okay, what's the name of that ray? The name of that ray is A, B. Is that right? No, because I've not included the arrow, because a ray goes on forever. So this is the only time it ever matters. If it's a segment, it doesn't matter. Uh, like if I'm just talking the segment AC, I can call CA or AC, but AB, I've got to say, well, this is. My beginning point, I don't typically put the dot. I could, but it would be unusual. I don't think I'd take off on a test if you did that, but you won't see it in most books like that, but it's always in which direction. Whereas once again, let me just make sure you're clear. If I have a line that has a D and an E on it, I can name that DE or I can name that ED. Those are both appropriate names because it goes on forever. It doesn't matter which order I list them in. Makes more sense probably D to E because we're used to reading from left to right. But ED also names that line. If I say BAA here, it's actually describing, I'm going to change colors here. If I do BA, I am describing this. I am describing starting from here and going in this direction forever. So that's super important. You've got to understand that almost as much as knowing how to do BAC and CAB to describe that angle there. Um, I think that's plenty. Thanks for watching. And I just got to figure out how to clear my drawings and stop everything. I still don't know how to stop everything. There we go. Bye bye.